Hi, today we're going to be learning about equivalent forms of fractions and how to convert between them. We're going to start off by looking at converting between decimal fractions and common fractions, converting a decimal fraction into a common fraction. But before we do that, you need to know about place value because that will help you to actually understand what's going on with the decimal fractions. So let's have a look at this over here. In this table over here, I've got the different values of the different positions in a given number. So in a normal number, you would have these positions over here, and you can have further on this way as well, going, so you have your ones or your units, then you have your tens, your hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, then you have your hundred thousands and millions, and it can continue going, okay? But I'm just showing you these ones at the moment. So these are all the positions or the, the place values for your whole number part of your number. Then you've got your decimal point or your comma, and then everything that comes after the decimal point or your comma is the fractional part of your number. You've got your tenths straight after the decimal comma, then you've got your hundredths, then you've got your thousandths, then you've got your ten thousandths. And just like these positions over here in your number, they have different values. This number, they are all ones. Here you've got your tens, here you've got your hundreds, here you've got your thousands. These ones also have different values. You've got your tenths, your hundredths, your thousandths, and your ten thousandths. Okay, and they can also continue going, I've only shown up to ten thousandths, but then you would have your hundred thousandths and your millionths and so on. Okay, so these are the fractional part of your number, and these form the whole part of your number, the whole number part of your number. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to use this to help us to convert decimal fractions into common fractions by looking at where a digit is in the number, what the value of that is, and then use that to help us to turn it into a common fraction. Okay, so let's have a look at our first example. Our first example here, we, are, we need to write the fraction 0 0.5 as a common fraction. Okay, so first let's have a look at what that looks like in our table. If I take the 0 0.5, the 0 is in my 1's place, that goes over there, there's my comma, it goes with all the commas, and then I've got my 5, which is straight after the comma, it's in the 10th place. Okay, all of the other positions have nothing in them, so they're just 0. Okay, you don't need to write any extra zeros, but they are still there. Okay, right, now let's have a look at how we're going to change that into a common fraction. Okay, so first of all, in that number 0 0.5, you need to know that the 5's value is actually 5 tenths. Okay, that's where it sits. It's in the 5 tenths, or it's in the tenths position. So that means 5 tenths, which is the same as 5 over 10. Okay, 5 tenths is 5 over 10. So I can say that 0 0,5 is equal to 5 over 10, 5 tenths, and then once I know what my fraction looks like as a common fraction, I can then go and simplify it. And that will give me a half. If I divide the numerator and the denominator both by 5, I get 1 over 2, and that gives me a half. So 0, 0,5 is actually the same as a half. Okay, so that is how you convert your decimal fraction into a common fraction. You're going to look at where each of the digits is in your uh, in your number, in your decimal fraction, what its value is based on its position, and then use that to turn it into a common fraction. Okay, so now I'm going to give you some that you're going to do for yourself. Here you've got six that you're going to do, and I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this.
Okay, so let's go through that quickly. So the first one, 0 0.7, you need to look at the 7 and see where is it. It's in the tenths position. So that is actually 7 tenths. Now, 7 tenths can't be simplified, so we're going to leave it like that. The next one, 0 0.003. I don't need to worry about the zeros. I'm just going to worry about the 3. Where is the 3? It's in the thousandths position. So that is 3 over 1,000, 3 thousandths. Again, I can't simplify it, so I'm going to leave it like that. The next one, I've got 0 0.08. The 8 is in the hundredth position, so that is going to be 8 over 100. Now this I can simplify. If I divide 8 by 4, I will get 2, and if I divide 100 by 4, I will get 25. So that gives me 2 over 25. Okay, then the next one I've got over here, 0 0.30. Now again, I don't need to worry about zeros. I'm only going to worry about digits that aren't zero. So I'm going to change, I'm going to say that this three is in the tenths position. So it's going to be three over 10 and I can't simplify that. So it stays as it is. Then over here, I've got 0, 0.006. The six is in the thousandths position. So I need to say six over 1000 and that I can simplify three goes in or two goes into six three times and two goes into a thousand five hundred times giving me 3 over 500. And then 0 0.040, again, I'm only going to look at the 4. The 4 is in the hundredths position, so that's going to be 4 over 100. And if I simplify that by dividing both by 4, I'll get 1 and 25. So that's 1 over 25. So that's what you should have got for each of those examples. Right, now let's have a look at another example. Now, all of the ones we've done so far, we've only had one non-zero digit in our uh, decimal fraction. Now we're going to go on to ones that have more than one non-zero digit. So this first one that we've got is 0 0.065, okay? Now, if I take this and I look at this fraction in my table at where each of the digits is in terms of its place value, this is what it's going to look like. So I have over here, my zero, my first zero is in the, the ones or the units position. Then I've got my comma. Then I've got another zero, okay? Then I've got over here six, which is in the hundredths position, and five, which is in the thousandths position. Okay, so let's have a look at how we would convert this into a common fraction. So first, in my number or in my decimal fraction, zero comma zero six five, the six is six hundredths. or 6 over 100. And the 5 is 5 thousandths, or 5 over 1,000. Okay, so that's the value of each of those digits. Now, there are two ways that I can convert this into a, into a common fraction. I can do it a longer way, or I can do it a shorter way. I'm first going to show you the long way, but then I'm also going to show the short way, and, and I'm going to be using the short way for most of what we do. So the long way is to take each of the digits and say it's that plus that plus that plus that plus that. So I'm going to say the six is six hundredths. So zero comma zero six five is six hundredths plus the value of the five, which is five thousandths. Now, we know how to simplify this because we've done addition of common fractions. I need to find my LCD, which is going to be 1,000. So this is going to be something over 1,000 plus something over 1,000. I multiply that by 10. So I multiply the top by 10. That is 60 plus 5 because it was already over 1,000. That gives me 65 over 1,000, which I can then simplify. And if I simplify it, when I divide by 5... 65 divided by 5 gives me 13. So that's going to be 13 over 1,000 divided by 5, which is 200. Okay, so that gives me 13 over 200. So if I convert 0 0.065 into a common fraction, I get 13 over 200. Now, I said that is the long way. There is a quicker way of doing it. I can do it much quicker than that by, instead of doing it separately, I can say, what is the, sm the smallest place value that actually has something in it? 
the smallest place value that has something in it is the thousandths position. So I'm going to use the thousandths position and I'm going to work with that. So I'm going to have something over a thousand. And then I'm going to take all this whole number from the, the decimal point onwards and I'm going to write that over a thousand. Now I don't need to write the zero because it's in front of all the other digits and it doesn't make any difference. So I'm going to write 65 over a thousand. Okay, so I'm going to take this whole section over here and because my last one is the thousandths position, I'm going to be working over a thousand. And I write that whole thing over a thousand, but I don't need to worry about the first zero because it doesn't change. Zero, six, five, and 65 are the same. Okay, so now this is the same as what I had over there. So I was able to skip straight from the decimal fraction to here. I didn't have to worry about adding common fractions because I was able to jump straight there by using that last uh, place value position to help me to know that I'm working over thousands or over, um, I'm working with thousands. And then I can go and simplify it and it'll be exactly the same as this one, giving me 13 over 200. Okay, so that is the quick way of doing it, where we look at our decimal fraction, we look and see what is the last digit in my decimal fraction that isn't zero. Okay, it's five. So I'm working, and that is in the thousandths position. So I'm working with thousandths. And then I write all of the value, all the digits that I have here as a number over a thousand. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a few that you're going to work on for yourself. And I'm going to give you two minutes to work on this as well. Okay, so let's go through all of those. So the first one, A, we had 0 0.75. Now I'm going to be doing all of these the quick way. So I look and see the last non-zero digit that I have is five. It's in the hundredths position. So that means I'm working with hundredths over here. So I have something over a hundred. So now I'm going to look at the whole thing that I've got over here and I'm going to use it as a whole number. So I'm going to say that is 75 hundredths. Now, when you simplify that, 25 goes into 75 three times, 25 goes into 100 four times, so you should have ended up with three quarters for this one. Okay, so that's what you should have got for question A. Question B, here, again, I look for my last non-zero digit. It is the five again, but this time it's in the thousandths position, so I'm going to have something over a thousand. Okay, then I take 
all of this and I write it as a fraction or as a number over a thousand but I don't need to worry about that first zero I, I do have to worry if a zero is between non-zero digits but if it's in front of all of the non-zero digits I don't have to worry about it okay so I don't have to worry about the zero I'm just going to write the two and the five making 25 over a thousand again I'm going to divide by 25 that goes in there once 25 goes into a thousand 40 times and that gives us 1 over 40. Okay, the next one. Question C. Here I have got my 2, which is in the hundreds position or hundredths position. So that's going to be something over a hundred. And I'm going to write both of these as a number over a hundred. That's 12 over a hundred. So that gives me, if I simplify that, I can divide both of them by 4. 4 goes in there 3 times, 4 goes in there 25 times. So that's going to be 3 over 25. The next one, I've got 0, 0,125. The 5 is the last non-zero digit. It is in the thousandths position. So I'm going to be doing something over 1,000. Now, this whole number is going to go over 1,000, 125. I can divide here by 125 goes into both of those. 125 goes into 125 once. 125 goes into 1,000 eight times. And that gives me 1 over 8. Then 0 0.405, again, I've got in the thousandths position over here. So I'm going to be working with something over a thousand. I'm going to take this whole number. Now, in this case, I do have to write that zero. I can't leave it out because it's between non-zero digits. So I need to write the zero. So it's going to be 405 over a thousand. And then I'm going to simplify. I'm going to divide by five. So 405 divided by five gives me 81 over a thousand divided by five which is 200 so that gives me 81 over 200 and then 450 or 0 0.450 0. now in this one remember i said we're going to look for the last non-zero digits so the last non-zero digit is the five over here so i'm working with hundredths now you could work with thousandths if you want to okay i'll show both but if i work with hundredths then I'm going to have something over 100, but I mustn't write, I mustn't use any digits that come after the last non-zero digit. So I mustn't use the zero that comes after the five. So I'm just going to be working with the four and the five. I'm not working with that last zero over there. So it's going to be 45 over 100. If I divide both of those by five, this gives me nine, and that gives me 20. So that's going to be nine over 20. Now, like I said, we could actually have worked with thousandths. We could have said this is over a thousand, but then I would be including that zero I'd be, because I'm working with a zero as my last digit that I'm working with. So it's in a thousandth position. Then I have to include it when I write it here. So 450 over a thousand will give me the same thing when I simplify. Because if I divide both of them by 10, I'll end up with 45 over 100, which is what I had over there. And then I simplify and I get 9 over 20. So it doesn't matter if you... Do work with the extra zero afterwards, you'll still end up with the same result. You're just going to have to simplify a little bit more. Okay, so that's what you should have got for all of those questions. Right, now question, or the next example we're going to be doing, we've got 34.25 as a common fraction that we need to, we need to write 34.25 as a common fraction. Now, what you're going to have to do first here is recognize that this one has got non-zero digits before the decimal point, before the comma, which we haven't had in any of the examples before now. If we look at what this looks like in our place value table, it looks like this. So my three is in the tens position, my four is in the ones or units position, then I've got my comma, then I've got the two which is in the tenths position, and I've got the five which is in the hundredths position. Okay, so again there is a long way of doing this and there is a short way of doing this. I will show both to you, but then from there on, I will be using the short method. Okay, so over here, first of all, in the number 34,25, the 3 means 3 tenths, or 3 tens, or 30. The 4 is 4 ones or four units, which is four. The two is two tenths, so that's two over 10. 
and the five is five hundredths or five over one hundred. Okay, so now the long method is to take all of those and add them up and then simplify. So 34.25 is equal to 30 plus 4 plus 2 tenths plus 5 tenths or 5 hundredths. And then I'm going to go and simplify that. So I'm going to do my units or my whole numbers and my fractions separately. So 30 plus 4 is 34. Plus, over here, 2 over 10 and 5 over 100. I'm going to find my LCD. That is going to be 100 and 100. Multiply this by 10 to get 100. So I multiply that by 10 is 20 plus 5. Okay, 20 over 100 plus 5 over 100. So this is 34 plus 20 over 100 plus 5 over 100 is 25 over 100. Okay, now this I can simplify that fraction over there by dividing both of them by 25. 25 goes in there once, 25 goes in there four times. So that leaves me with a quarter. So 34 and we're adding a quarter. Now this I can just write as 34 and a quarter. Remember when you add a whole number and a fraction, we can just put it together as a mixed number. So 34 and a quarter is the same as 34 plus a quarter. So that's the long way of doing it. Now there are, there's, a sh there's the short way of doing it, but there are two ways of writing it. The one way is if I want to write it as an improper fraction or if I want to write it as a mixed number. So first I'm going to show you the mixed number version. So 34,25. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say I've got 34 is the whole number part of that decimal fraction. And then I've got a fraction part of my decimal fraction, which is the 0.25. So I'm going to change the 0.25 to, a, decim to a, co a common fraction, the same as I was doing in the previous examples over there. So I'm going to say this 5, the last non-zero digit, which is after the decimal point, is in the hundredths position. So I'm going to have something over 100. Okay, so this is going to be 34 and something over 100. Right, then I'm going to take this whole section, the whole fractional part of my number, and write that over 100. So that's 25 over 100. And then I can simplify that, and that gives me 34 and 25 over 100, just like it simplified over here to a quarter, is a quarter. So that gives me 34 and a quarter. So that's if I want to write it as a mixed number. The other option is to write it as a, an improper fraction. So 34,25. Now, if I'm going to write it as an improper fraction, I'm not going to write the whole number part of it. I'm just going to go straight ahead and say the last non-zero digit in my, in my number is in the thousandths position. So I'm going to have something over a thousand. And then I'm going to take the whole number and I'm going to write all of those digits. I don't worry about the comma now, though. I'm going to write all of those digits as a number over a thousand. And that gives me three, four, two, five over a thousand. Three thousand four hundred and twenty five over a thousand, which I can then simplify by saying thirty four two five. Three four two five divided by twenty five is one hundred and thirty seven over 1,000 divided by 25 this is supposed to be 100, sorry, over 100 100 divided by 25 is 4, okay so 137 over 4, if I say 137 over 4 it is the same as 30, I can't, you can't see that 34 and a quarter Okay, so that is actually the same as 34 and a quarter. It's just been written as an improper fraction. Okay, so let's go and have a look at our next example, or the, the ones that you're going to do for yourself, rather. So over here, you've got six questions that you need to now write as common fractions, six decimal fractions you need to write as common fractions. I'm going to give you two minutes again to work on these examples.
Okay, so let's go through each of those. So question A, you had 9.53. So I'm going to be doing these the, the quick method. I'm going to be doing it so that we write them as mixed numbers. Okay, so I'm going to say, take the 9. That is my whole number part of my fraction. So that's going to be 9 and, and then the 0.53 I'm going to write as my common fraction. The 3 is in the hundredth position, so this is going to be something over 100. And then I've got over here 5, 3, that makes 53 over 100. That can't be simplified, so that's how we're going to leave that one. The next one, we've got 4.272. The 4 is the whole number of my fraction, a whole number part of my fraction. And then the 272, the 0 0.272, that is the, the fractional part. This 2 over here is in the thousandths position, so it's going to be something over 1,000. And then I'm going to write 272 over it. A thousand and now this I can simplify okay now you know how to simplify fractions now we could do this the long way of dividing by 2 and dividing by 2 and whatever it takes to, to, to simplify this fraction but it is also helpful to know how to use a calculator to simplify a fraction so 272 over a thousand I just type it in as a fraction, it should simplify it for me like this. So that gives me 34 over 125. It is important for you to know how to simplify fractions, but it is also helpful to know how to use a calculator to simplify it for you. So that's going to be 4 and 34 over 125. Then over here we've got 10.985. The whole number part of my decimal over there is 10, so that's going to be 10 and something over a thousand because this five is in the thousands position so thousandths position so it's something over a thousand the nine eight five that whole section is going to go over a thousand and then this i can simplify i'm going to do the same thing as i did over here so i've got 985 over a thousand and they, that gives me 197 over 200. so that's 10 and 197 over 200. So that's what you should have got for question C. Question D, we've got 18 as the whole number part of our fraction, and then 103 over 1,000 because it's in the thousand. the 3 is in the thousandths position. So it's 103 over 1,000, and that can't be simplified. So that's going to stay as it is. Then 5,75, that's going to be 5 and something over a hundred because this five is in the hundredths position so it's going to be over a hundred and over a hundred we've got the 75 over here so it's to be 75 over 100 that i can simplify i divide both by 25 that gives me three over four okay and then the last one 15 comma zero seven two i've got 15 and something over a thousand because this is in the thousandths position so it's going to be now over here, I've got a zero. Now, all of the other ones over here, I had no zeros except for this one, which was between digits. I had to write that zero. This one, I don't need to write the zero because it's before the other digits in the fractional part of my number. So I don't need to worry about the zero. I can just write 72. And that I'm going to simplify. So 72 over 1,000 gives me 9 over 125 and that's what you should have got for question F okay so you can use now that you know how to do simplification of fractions you can start using your calculator for fractions that are going to be more difficult to simplify you don't have to waste time especially in the situation of a test or exam you don't have to waste time trying to simplify a fraction that is difficult to simplify if it's one that you can just do in your head then it's actually quicker to just do it in your head than to type it into the calculator. But if it's one that is going to be more difficult, it's going to take a lot of division to try and simplify, then you can just use the calculator to simplify it. Okay, now let's go on. So now what we've done so far is converting decimal fractions to common fractions. Now we're going to go the other way around. We're going to simplify com or we're going to convert common fractions to decimal fractions. Okay, so over here, the first example we're going to do is this one over here where we're going to be converting or we're going to be writing three over a hundred three hundredths as a decimal fraction so first let's just have a look at what this would look like in our place value table so three hundredths this is the hundredth position over here so the three is going to go over there now we can't just write the three 
we have to write all of the digits, the other digits that need to be filled in as well, the other zeros that need to be filled in as well. We don't need to fill in every single zero in every single position. So we need to know which zeros we must write and which zeros we mustn't write. Our ones or units position has to have something in it. So that has to be a zero if there's no non-zero digit there already. So I have to fill my zero in there. And then anything between that and any other non-zero digit has to be filled with zeros. So this one over here would have been empty. I have to fill it in with zero because it's between the ones position and the three over here, which is in the hundredths position. So I have to fill in any empty spaces between the ones position and any non-zero digits. Okay, so I have to fill this in with a zero. All the other positions I can just leave blank. I don't have to worry about those. Okay, so this 3 over 100 or 3 hundredths is going to be equal to 0, 0, 0,03. Putting my 3 in the hundredths position, making sure I have something in the ones position and I have to have placeholders shown with zeros for all of the other positions that have nothing in them. Otherwise, if I don't have a zero here, then I'm actually writing 0, 0,3, which is 3 tenths, not 3 hundredths. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a few that you're going to do for yourself. Right, so here you've got six that you're going to work on, and I'm going to give you two minutes again for these examples. Okay, so let's go through all of those. The first one we had seven over 10. So my seven is in the 10th position. So I have to have zero in my uh, ones position. And then I've got my 10th position, which is seven. So I don't have to fill in any extra zeros because there's nothing in between there. Next, I've got 25 over a thousand. Okay, now with 25 over a thousand, my five has to go in the, the thousandth position. So I'm going to have zero comma, and then the five is going to go in the thousandth position. The two is going to go in the hundredth position and I have to fill in anything in between. So that's going to be zero in the middle in the tenth position. Okay, so that's 25 over a thousand is 0, 0,025. The next one, six over a hundred, I've got zero comma and then the six must go in the hundredths position. So that's going to be over there. I need to fill in that tenths position with the zero. Next, I've got five over a thousand. So that's going to be zero comma. The five must go in the thousandths position, which is over here. 
the hundredth position needs a zero and the tenth position needs a zero. Here I've got 34 over a thousand, 34 over 100. If I write that as a decimal, I need to have up to my hundredths position. The four is going to go in the hundredths position and the three is going to go in the tenths position. Okay. And then over here, my nine tenths, I've got zero comma and then the nine goes in the tenths position like that. So that's what you should have got for each of those examples. So just be careful when you've got something more than a, a uh, unit at the top of your fraction, the last digit in that number goes in this position. So if this is the thousandths position, then the last digit is going to go there. So the five will go there and you'll fill in from the five going forwards like that. Okay, same thing with this one over here. The four goes in the hundredths position and then everything before the four fills in in front of the four over here. Okay, so that's what you should have got for each of those examples. Now let's have a look at another one. Here we are going to write three quarters as a decimal fraction. Now when we write three quarters as a decimal fraction, first of all, in order to write it as a decimal fraction, I have to have something over 10 or 100 or 1000. I have to have something over a power of 10. My denominator must be a power of 10. So the first thing I'm going to have to do here is I have to convert this to a power of 10. Okay, so three quarters I need to change that denominator to something as a power of 10. So does 4 go into 10? No, it doesn't. So then I go on to 100. Does 4 go into 100? Yes, it does. So I can convert this to something over 100. Okay? I have to convert it to something with a denominator that is a power of 10. And I work from the smallest power of 10 that I can, and I see does that denominator go into that number. It doesn't for 10. It does for 100. 4 goes into 100 25 times. So I need to multiply by 25. So I need to multiply the 3 by 25, and that gives me 75 over 100. So now I can convert this to a decimal fraction by saying I'm working with my hundredths position. So it's going to be 0, comma, and then my 5 is going to go in the hundredths position, and the 7 is going to go in the tenths position, and there's nothing in between there. Okay, so that gives me 0, 0,75. So that's what you're going to be doing for the examples in the next set over here, in the next activity. Here you've got 6 that you're going to be doing yourself again, and I'm going to give you 2 minutes to work on this. Okay, so let's go through each of those. 
So the first one, 7 over 20, I need to convert this. I need to rewrite it as something over a power of 10. So first, 10. Can I convert this to something over 10? I can divide 20 by 2 to get 10, but I can't divide 7 by 2 and get a whole number. So I'm not going to convert that to something over 10. So now we go on to 100. I can multiply 20 by 5 to get 100. So I'm going to convert this and write it as something over 100. By multiplying by 5, I need to multiply the 7 by 5 as well, giving me 35 over 100. So that I can then, then change to a decimal fraction, which has something in the hundredths position. So I've got 0, comma. The 5 is going to go in the hundredths position, and the 3 is going to go in the tenths position, and obviously I don't have any... I don't have anything in between there. Right, next I've got 5 over 8. 5 over 8, I can't convert 8 to 10. 8 doesn't go into 10. 8 also doesn't go into 100, but 8 does go into 1,000. 8 goes into 1,000 125 times. If I say 8 times 125, it gives me 1,000. Okay, so I'm multiplying by 125 to get 1,000, so I need to multiply my numerator by 125 as well. So 5 times 125 is eight, 625. So this is what I'm now going to convert to a decimal fraction. So this I can say I'm going to have something in the thousandths position. So I'm going to have 0, comma, the 5 is going to go in the thousandths position, the 2 is going to be in the hundredths position, and the 6 is going to be in the tenths position. So I have 0, 6, 2, 5. Right, next one. 4 over 5, I can change this to something over 10. So that's going to be 8 over 10. If I multiply the numerator and the denominator both by 2, I get 8 over 10. And then that is going to be 0, 8, where the 8 is in the tenths position. Next one, 12 over 40. Now this one, you can convert to something over 10 by dividing the numerator and the denominator both by 4. So that's going to give us 3 over 10. Now if you didn't realize that, if you thought you had to multiply and you multiplied by something and you couldn't get 100, then if you multiplied by something to get 1000, you would have ended up with 300 over 1000. That will work, okay? It's just going to mean you're going to have uh, extra zeros that you mustn't worry about writing down. Okay, so I've got 3 over 10. This is 0, 3. But as I said, you could have done this like this. 12 over 40 is if I multiply 40 by 50, 40 times, no, 40, 1,000 divided by 40 is 25. Sorry, if I multiply that by 25, then I will get 1,000. So I need to multiply my 12 by 25 as well. So 12 times 25 is 300. So that is a 300 over 1,000. And if I write that as a decimal fraction, then I get 0, comma. In my thousandth position, I'm going to have 0. In my hundredth position, I'll have 0. And in my tenth position, I'll have 3. I don't need to write those zeros because there's nothing after them. So it still gives me 0, comma, 3, the same as that one over there. So both ways will work. You could also have taken this and just simplified it and said divide that by 100, divide that by 100, you end up with 3 over 10 anyway. Okay, next one, we've got 40 over 500. The same thing applies. Over here, I can divide both of these by 5, and I can get something over 100. Okay, so if I divide that by 5, I will get 8 over, if I divide this by 5, I will get 100. Now, I can't simplify this to something over 10, because I can't divide that by 10, but I can work with 8 over 100. So over here, I'm going to convert this to a decimal fraction with something in the hundredths position. So I've got 0, comma, and in the hundredths position, I'm going to have my 8. Now, I have nothing in front of that, so I'm going to fill that extra tenths position in with a 0. So I have 0, comma, 0, 8. This one, again, you could have done by converting this to thousandths instead. So that would have been 80 over 1,000 by multiplying both by 2. And then that, again, I could simplify by dividing both of them by 10, leaving me with 8 over 100, which will still give me 0, 0, 8. Okay, so that's another way of doing it as well. Then over here, 95 over 125. This 
I can convert to something over 100, but it's going to be a little bit complicated to do it. I have to divide by 5 and I have to times by 4. Okay, you can do it, but it is possibly easier in this case to just convert to something over 1,000 by multiplying by 8. So if I take the 95 and times by 8, I'll get 760. Okay, but now 760, I can simplify by dividing by 10, and I can divide this by 10 as well, cancelling out those two zeros, leaving me with 76 over 100. So I'm going to be working with something in the hundredths position. I'm going to put my 6 in the hundredth position, so this needs to be 0, comma. The 6 goes in the hundredth position, and the 7 goes in the tenth position, and I have nothing else to write down. You don't need to write that extra 0 over there because we could cancel it out and there's nothing after it so you don't have to you don't have to write any zeros that come after any non-zero digits okay so that's what you should have got for those examples now let's have a look at another example now this one over here is a little bit different because we have now got um an improper fraction okay so for this example we need to first convert the, the 22 over 5 to something over 10 and we can also change it to a mixed number at the same time if we want to we don't have to okay so there are two methods for this one as well we can convert to a mixed number we don't have to right so i'm going to show you both ways so over here i have got 22 over 5. the first method is if we convert it to a mixed number so if i convert this to a mixed number I'm going to say 5 goes into 22 four times with a remainder of 2 over 5. Okay, so that's converting it to a mixed number. I take the numerator, divide it by the denominator, and I write the whole, part, the whole number part of it down, and I write down the remainder still over the denominator. So that's 4, over two, four and 2 fifths. Then I need to change this. To something over 10 or 100 or 1000 like we always do when we're converting to a decimal fraction I can change this to tenths so it's going to be 4 and something over 10 I multiply that by 2 so I multiply this by 2 as well that gives me 4 over 10 so that's 4 and 4 tenths so now when I write this as a decimal fraction the 4 is going to go in front of my decimal point because it's the whole number part of my fraction comma the 4 tenths goes in the four goes in the tenths position so that gives me four comma four so that is the one way of doing it where i take that and i write it as a mixed number and then i convert it to a decimal fraction keeping the whole number part in front of my decimal point and the fraction goes after my decimal point the other way is to keep it as an improper fraction okay 22 over 5 I'm going to convert that, still writing it as, a, as an improper fraction, but I'm going to change it to something over 10 because I need, to my, I need my denominator to be, to be a power of 10. So I'm going to multiply this by 2 to get 10, multiply the numerator by 2, and that gives me 44. Okay, so now when I convert this to, an imp, to a decimal fraction, I'm going to have something in the tenths position. The, the last digit over here is going to go in the tenths position. So I'm going to have 4 in the tenths position. In front of the tenths position is my decimal point. And then this 4 is going to go on the other side over there. So I still have the 44 written like that. But the 4 is in the tenths position. The comma is separating the tenths position from the ones position. And that means that this ends up in the ones position over here. So you end up with 4, 4, the same as what we had over there. Either method is absolutely fine. And you can choose which way you want to do it for any question that you have. Right. Now you're going to have some that you're going to do for yourself. And I'm giving you two minutes again to work on these examples.
Okay, so let's go through all of those. The first one we had was 7 and 3 tenths. This is already written as a mixed number, so it makes sense to just keep it as a mixed number. So that's going to be the 7 is the whole number part of my fraction, so that's going to be 7, comma, and then 3 tenths, the 3 goes in the tenths position, so it's going to be 7, comma, 3. The next one, 2,097 over 1,000. Now, I'm not going to change these two mixed numbers when they're already improper fractions. I'm going to keep them as improper fractions, okay, because it's not necessary to do that extra step. I can convert it, keeping it as an improper fraction, if I'm careful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I'm working with the thousandths position, so my 7 must go in the thousandths position. I'm going to be writing from there. So I've got 7 is in the thousandths position, this is in the hundredths position, this is in the tenths position, and this will be then in the ones or the units position. So my comma is going to go over there. So that gives me 2 comma 0, 9, 7. So that's what you should get for that one. The next one is 864 over 100. Same thing. I'm not going to convert it. I'm going to keep it as an improper fraction. And this time I'm going to be working with the hundredths position. So my 4 is going to go in the hundredths position. The 6 is going to be in the tenths position. And then the 8 will then be in the ones or the units position with a comma in between there. Okay, so that's what you should have got for those ones. So those ones, the denominators are already powers of 10. So you didn't have to change the fractions to find equivalent fractions that had powers of 10 for the denominators. These ones over here, you are going to have to. Okay, so this one, I need to multiply the 20 by 5 to get 100. So that's going to be over 100. I multiply 813 by 5, and that gives me 4,065. Okay, so that's what you should have got first when you converted that to have, or changed it to have a denominator of 100. Okay, then I'm going to convert this to a decimal fraction by saying I'm working with my hundredths position. So that's going to be 5 hundredths. This is going to be 6 tenths. I have zero in the ones or the units position, so this is going to be my comma over there, and my four is going to be in the tens position. So this over here should have given you 40, comma, six, five. The next one, we've got 20 and seven over eight. This one, because it's already been written as a mixed number, I'm going to use it as a mixed number. I'll take advantage of that, and I'll keep the 20 as it is, but the, the 7 over 8, I have to change so that it has a denominator that is a power of 10. Now, I can't change 8 to 10 or 100, but I can change it to 1,000 by multiplying by 125. So I'm going to multiply 7 by 125 as well, giving me 875. Okay, and then that I can convert to a decimal fraction. The 20 is going to be my whole number part of my fraction, comma. Then the 875 is over a thousand, so I'm working with my thousandths position. So I've got five in the thousandths position. I've got seven hundredths, and I've got eight tenths. So that's 20, comma, 875. And then the last one, 6027, 6027 over 50. Again, I have to convert this to something that has a power of 10 in the, in the denominator. I need to multiply by 2 to get 100, so that's going to be over 100. 6,027 times 2 is 12,054. Okay, so that's what you should have got over 100 if you kept it as an improper fraction. Next, I'm going to convert it to a decimal fraction. Now, when I convert it to a decimal fraction, I'm working with the hundredths position. So my 4 is going to go in the hundredths position. The 5 is going to go in the tenths position, which means my comma is over here. And then these are going to be in front of my comma. So I've got 0, 2, 1. So that gives me 120, 5, 4. It's a bit hard to see. So 120, 5, 4. Right, so that's what you should have got for each of those. So that is converting between common fractions and decimal fractions. Now we're going to quickly have a look at converting between common fractions, decimal fractions, and percentages as well. Now first, remember, when you're working with percentages, you need to know that a percentage is an amount out of 100. And that's important for you to know when we're doing conversions with percentages. The first one we're going to do is writing 25 as a common fraction and as a decimal fraction. So this is the example we have over here. 
first, when we're working with 25%, you need to know that 25%, as I said, percentage is an amount out of 100. So this is going to be 25 out of 100. So when I write this as a common fraction, all I'm going to do is I'm going to write that 25, so 25% as a common fraction is 25 over 100. If you want to convert a percentage to a fraction, to a common fraction, you just write it over 100, and then you go and simplify it. So 25 over 100, I can simplify, I can divide both of those by 25, that gives me 1 over 4. So as a common fraction, 25% is a quarter. As a decimal fraction, if I take that 25%, I can change that to a decimal fraction by dividing by 100. 25 divided by 100. Okay. Now, when we divide by 100, what it ends up looking like is that the comma, which at the moment, the decimal point, is sitting over there, it moves one, two places. When we divide by 100 okay it's not actually what's happening it's not really the comma is not really moving but that's what it kind of looks like so this is going to end up with a comma in front of the two and it's going to be 0 comma 2 5 so as a decimal that is 0 comma 2 5 you could have worked that out using this as well but if you don't have the the common fraction it is helpful to know how to convert a percentage to a decimal without needing the common fraction in in between okay so you just divide by 100 and when you do that you move the decimal point it looks like you're moving the decimal point two places to the left okay so that's what we get for our decimal fraction over there so now I'm going to give you some that you're going to do for yourself in this table over here so here you've got a table where some percentages are filled in some decimal fractions are filled in some common fractions are filled in and you need to fill in all the missing values and I'm going to give you four minutes to work on this activity.
Okay, so let's go through all of those. So the first one you had was 96% is what you were given. Okay, so remember when you convert a percentage to a common fraction, you just write it over 100 and then you simplify. So you've got 96 over 100. This I can simplify dividing by, a by dividing by 4 and dividing by 4. That's going to give me 24. Let's write this. 24 over 25. Okay, so that's what you should have got for that one. Then, writing it as a decimal, we just divide by 100. So we, do, we move our decimal point two places to the left. That gives you 0, 0,96. Okay, the next one we were given, the decimal. So here we have to convert it to a percentage. When you convert it to a percentage, you move the decimal point two places the other way. So it's going to be 13,8%. And then when I write it as a common fraction, this is over a thousand because it's in the thousandth position. So it's going to be 138 over a thousand, which we can simplify. 138 over a thousand gives us 69 over 500. Next one, we've got a half. Now a half... I first need to convert that to something over a multiple of or a power of 10. So this is going to be over 10. I multiply by, by 5, so I multiply the top of 5. That gives me 5 over 10. So this is going to be 0, 0,5 over there. Okay, now when I convert that to a percentage, if I move the decimal point two places this way, it's going to, I need to fill in that extra zero over there, so it's going to be 50%, like that, okay? I could also have taken this and multiplied both of those by 10 and got 50 over 100, which is 50%. This one over here, you need to be very careful, 2.3. Now this one, when I convert this to a, a common fraction, is going to be 2 and 3 tenths, okay, because it's the whole number part is 2 and this is in the tenth position, so it's three, 2 and 3 tenths. You could also have written 23 over 10, that would work as well, okay. Then for my percentage, you need to be careful. When I convert this to a percentage, if I move this two places that way, I'm going to end up with 230%. Now, just be aware, you can have more than 100%, okay? So don't think that you got it wrong just because you have something that's more than 100%. You can have more than 100%. So 230%. If you have something that is more than 1, you're going to end up with more than 100%. Okay. Right, 17 over 20, just like I did in the previous ones over there. This one, I had to convert that to something with a power of 10 in my denominator, I'm going to convert this, multiplying by 5 to something over 100. That is going to give me 85 over 100, okay? So when I write this as a decimal, it's going to be 0, 0.85, and as a percentage, it's going to be 85%. So that's what you should have got for that one. 125%, so here you've been given more than 100%. If I'm move my decimal point two places to the left by dividing by 100 that's going to give me 1,25 so when I write it as a decimal fraction it's 1,25 and as a common fraction it's 1 and 25 over 100 but I can simplify that to, to 1 and a quarter okay and then I've got 0, 0,056 as my last one when you take this and you convert it to a percentage, what we need to do is we need to multiply by 100. So 1, 2, that's going to give me 5,6. So it's going to be 5,6%. And then when I convert this to a common fraction, it's going to be over 1,000 because that's in the thousandth position. So we have 56 over 1,000, which I can simplify. And that gives me 7 over 125. 
And that's what you should have got for all of those. Let me just put this up for you over here so that you can see nicely. That's what you should have got for all of those over there. So this one also you could have written over here, the one and a quarter, you could have written as five quarters as well, five over four. That would be acceptable as well. So that's what you should have got for all of those examples. And that is how we work with equivalent forms of fractions. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.